Afternoon, everybody. Well, it's here. You can realise by the sound, it's uh, back, to, back to square one again. Uh, celebration day of the day, well it's not my birthday, well it is my birthday but it's not why I'm celebrating. It's uh, a fishy first day of spring and I, I love it. This is it, March the 21st. Uh, what can now officially say one to spring? It's in the north, north east, it's freezing cold, it's blown a, blown a hole again there. Um, I was going to start this video off from the outside. As you know, I've got a nice piece of land at the back of me, a bit of private land, but it's um, it's not used and it's uh, just a little wildlife haven. Um, what I was going to do this afternoon was to go out there and try and get a couple of the um, of the nettle beds cleared. As you know, I, um, I love everything for free, as much as I can, and uh, nettle's just one of them things. It's grown over the wild, uh, so I like to use it as much as I can. I use it in my tea. Uh, tomorrow when I go to the allotment, when I go to the plot, um, I'm going to give it a good stirring up, drain some off, and uh, give it strawberry plants a first feed. But what I want to do is I want to take a couple of the strawberry plants down, give them a good clean up. Um, the only thing I've had is a little bit of uh, stuff with a potlash around them, which helps their roots build up, and uh, gives them a bit of feeding, as you know. Um, strawberries will be fruited, they like the potlash. So I'll put that on a bit early, but what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to give them a drink of nettle juice, um, which is, um, it's got a lot of nitrogen in it. So what I want to do, I'm going to give them a drink at first, because there's no fruit uh, stalks on at the moment, so the nitrogen will not hurt them. All the nitrogen will do is help them build up their roots a bit more, and that bulk out their plants, their, um, their leaves and that, which is uh, predominantly green. So they're going to take all that nitrogen in, and they're uh, fatten the plants out lovely. And now once the fruit sets, then we'll start on the potash. We'll probably go to a, a comfrey tea, seaweed, something like that. But uh, for tomorrow, um, we're going to the um, we're going to the nettle juice. I'll give them a drink of that. I want to give the barrels a good stirring up. Um, uh, I'll have to put a mask on, but uh, it will not stink. But so I'm hoping to get a, get a couple of um, a couple of jugs pulled off it. I might even have a taste of it myself. If uh, I turn out like a Hulk, uh, then you'll know what I've been drinking. But uh, no, that's a plan for the day. Um, as I say, if this rain dies off, I might just pop out and give us a little bit of uh, showing outside and show you what I mean about the nettle beds. Uh, I'm really pleased with things are growing at the moment. I'm just going to give you a little, give you a little show on the greenhouse because uh, when my brother comes tomorrow, he's bringing his trailer, and I'm hoping the majority of the plants in here will go out and up the allotment to us a little bit of heat or not much. Just keep the temperature uh, up to 50, and that's all I like. Uh, because the main thing in here tomorrow is to get, try and get my tomatoes sorted out. Uh, they're starting growing a little bit here away at the moment, but that's, uh, the temperatures have fluctuated so much over the last couple of days. Uh, yesterday it was absolutely boiling here. I come in um, in the afternoon, open the greenhouse up, and it was nearly 80 in here. I just felt a little bit of sunshine on the roof. So I had to throw the doors open, throw the vent open, and get it cooled straight back down. Um, as you know, I don't like it any more than 55 if I can get away with it quite happy at that temperature, but um, yeah, and today is uh, completely different, as I say, it's, we're now officially in the spring, and uh, it's, shown it's, um, it's shown it's true colours, rain in the north is blowing a gale, but uh, hey ho, we'll put up with it, um, every day is not the same, but uh, we'll just, uh, we'll get by, so I'm just going to have you a little, give you a little look on the greenhouse, I know you can't see much from where I'm sitting, my little perch down here, but um, I'll give you a little, um, little idea of what's going on at the moment. Uh, as I say, uh, I've got my brother coming up tomorrow. Oh, sorry about the, uh, the jumpiness. I've got my brother coming up tomorrow, so all these leaks are out. Um, these are my own show leaks. Uh, these are BMs. And what they'll do, they'll, they've been potted off, and they're nice um, two litre pots. So what they'll do, they'll go up the allotment tomorrow, and uh, they'll go into a bigger bucket. Because they're going to sit there for another six weeks. Um, or four weeks at least, so I need a decent sized bucket to put them in, give them a good bit of feed and then let them grow on. Uh, at the moment, everything's, um, everything's starting to grow away quite well, I'm pleased with them. Um, there's my Billy Lamb onions there, I part them anyway. I'm going to leave them for another fortnight till the end of March, and then I'm going to pot them off into the 3-inch pots. Well, they're the big show onions. Uh, there's the Elsa Craig ones, still under there. Just the plastic containers, and they're getting a, just a lovely size. Them, no, I'm well pleased with them. 
that's just singly sewn in, in the same, their own compartments, so I'm quite happy with them. They'll go into three inch pots, um, as I say, they're not, they're not as big as the, the big boys on the, on the internet, but you will get a smashing onion off them. Um, for the far side, I'm pleased with the lobelia. Uh, as you know, I like to grow them in rows, so I'll have the lobelia shooting away. Uh, they'll be ready for transplanting in about another fortnight. Quite happy with them. Um, I'll show you how we, if I can get into them, yeah. Nice straight rows, there's uh, six rows there, and uh, this one row daisy, they'll go out tomorrow, because to me they're getting a little, just a little bit too big now, before putting on. I want to harden them up for a little bit, for another week or two up the allotment, and then we start putting them up into our uh, multi-cell trays. Um, as I say, I don't like them getting too big. That's a later tray that I, I saw a week later, and uh, just in rows. He'll stop in here for another couple of days. Quite, quite, quite tough for them. Uh, Chris Hans are growing well in my cuttings. I've got a load of cuttings on these. I've got cuttings on the top here. Um, I'm going to do quite a few videos on these. I've had a load of um, a load of uh, comments on the on the on the the, um, the Chris Hans ones and how to grow them. And they're, and they're quite an easy plant to grow. Um, but uh, no doubt we'll, we'll deal with all that in another in another video. These are the, the bedding and annual flower seeds that I saw the other day. There's Sorinth, there's Hollyhock, there's Malvia. There's uh, Honesty. The Honesty is growing really well, and that's a perennial. So, uh, as I say, seeds are quite easy to grow away if you, if you look after them properly. They kill you, that's another uh, perennial. You can pop them in. But, um. Here's the Craig onions, the ones I potted up, and uh, they're doing fine. These will go up the allotment tomorrow. It's, it's just a, a lovely size, the ones I like. They'll stop in there for another fortnight at least. And then they'll be potted off into a, um, a, a 9 centimetre pot. And uh, if they get a bit bigger, or just a smaller one, just a 6 centimetre to start with. And, but they've got to stop in, in them pots, the way I look at it now. They've got to stop in them pots for another um, another four weeks. Because the earliest we can plant outside is uh, beginning of May. So they've got four to six weeks to sit in them pots yet, so yeah, well pleased with them. Uh, there's me. Right, well there's two of me Russian giants. There's a third one there. Hello baby, I sing to him every night. <laughs> I know uh, Dean Huddle just uh, wanted to know my secrets. Uh, I was watching him the other night putting his um, sunflowers up. I noticed he wasn't singing, but uh, well, that's maybe one of the secrets I should be keeping to myself. Uh, these are my block peppers. I'll have to get them potted up today. I brought these um, brought these out ready for potting up. They're, they're just a nice size, and that's how I like them before potting them in a single pot. They'll go in the same size pot, uh, just keep them nice and small. Uh, and these are my giant American to tomatoes. They're rumping away. Uh, now, these have just been grown cool. That's all. And now that they're in full light, they're, uh, they're basking and they're just doing too much, too much heat at all. What I'm going to do at the end of this month, I'm going to make another sown, but I'm going to sow these completely cold because I want to try and slow them down a lot. I, no I noticed last year they got quite a quite a, a bit size when I started them off in the heat, and maybe that's why they shot away and started pushing out so much, but I'm going to try and grow some cool this year and just keep them as cool as I can, get a nice short, stocky plant, and just uh, hopefully we'll get, a nice, uh, we'll get a nice tomato from them. Uh, these are the, the seeds that I got free from, I think it was Sutton's. Uh, these are Nimbus. There was only five seed. But as you see, the five seed in the pot and they've all generated quite easy. It's not hard to uh, to grow tomatoes if you just uh, take a bit of care with them. Uh, and what I tend to do, do with one of these Nimbus, I'm going to try for outside um, on the patio. As I explained earlier on, uh, you can grow tomatoes outside if you're very canny with your uh, with your sowns and canny with your your collection and what you use. No, I'm, that that patio area there is just nice where the our lass's flower barrel is. I'm going to have to discreetly remove that without her noticing. <laughs> I'll try hard. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay a little bit of polythene from the top of the fence down to the bottom. Have a grow bag and three pots, and I tend growing three tomatoes in there. Now that's so facing. Um, I'll put a grow bag in there and three bottomless ring culture pots uh, and I'll grow three tomatoes up there. One will be the Nimbus 
Um, one being garden as delight, which I'll, I think I'll grow quite easy outside, and of course my old favourite, Elta Craig. I'll grow one Elta Craig, and I'll, I'll just prove to you that if you go about it the right way and you get your timing right, you can grow tomatoes outside quite successfully. You know, um, just with the help of a little bit of polythene, I'll string it to the top of the um, top of the fence and just drape it down. It'll only be on a bit of roof, and that's so I can roll it up each day when the sun's on them, and then bring it back down in the evening. I'll use a couple of hanging basket, what's on there, a couple of hanging basket brackets here, and on there I can just hang the, the uh, polythene over, drip it down over night time, just to keep any heavy rain or uh, any cold spells off them. But I'm sure I will not get um, three good tomato crops grown up here. Um, so that's it for the time being, in here anyway, but the rain has stopped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pop outside, and I'm going to just take you around the back there and just uh, hopefully show you what I intend to do with um, with the nettles. Because I will have to start cropping them twice this year. Uh, but I explained to you last year, if you go back to my very first video, um, which is the nettle crop, which was around about May time last year, and that's when I first started doing the videos. Um, so I'm going to take you back around today and just uh, give you a little look at the nettles and how they're growing. Oh, just so I know it's only springtime, but they've just started coming through there now, so all I want to do is just clear a little bit of space and some of the old stems, chop them back, um, and then just uh, let them grow away from there. The wife's herd bed's looking there quite well at the moment. That's something I built two years ago. We used to have a little bit of lawn there, but it wasn't doing any good, so um, just please well, we can come downstairs and get handfuls of herbs when we need them. Uh, as I say, as I say at the moment, the daffodils are making a comeback. And uh, yeah, it's freezing up here. Blowing a gale, but uh, no, nah, I love it. Yep, it's the first day of spring, so let's just enjoy it. Eh? Okay, for the time being, I've got myself way around the back and go and pick a rake up and we'll have a look at these um, nettles on the back. Well, here we are. Uh, sun's just trying to break through there. Still raining. But uh, on the whole, it's quite nice. And uh, this is a, uh, as you know, if you check a few of my last videos out, this is uh, just a little bit of the paradise just behind my house. It's a uh, private land. It's, uh, it's never been used for years, but it's an absolute paradise. There's, uh, there's foxes down there, and uh, the birds, bird life is absolutely fantastic. Wood pigeons, there's tits, there's blackbirds, there's finches. You name it, they're here, and we'll love them. The robins. Now, as you can see, this lot here is just all nettles. That's all the dead and dying um, nettle leaves. If you watch the video that I had last year, um, this is where I took my second last crop from. Um, now, all this, if I can get myself up right without uh, losing. Without losing my stick, I should be okay. Um, all this will just snap away. Uh, and of course, I can see from here the nettles are just starting to come through there. Swing back round. Look at the way I was working before. And just there, where my rake is, I'll be, I'll be starting this here. Taking the race, usually. Very easy to snap them. Uh, I will probably take a sec to them this weekend. All I'm doing is just taking some of the rubbish off the top of the plants. As you can see all the nettles are just starting to come through there now. And uh, that's just where I want. I'll make them use a little bit of nitro choke, uh, just to sprinkle around them. If not nitro choke, I'll probably bring a um, get a bin full of manure I brought down. And the manure will just sit on the top of them and uh, they get a fantastic crop of nettles coming through. 
Now uh, people will be saying, well, why do you want a fantastic crop of nettles? Well, as I'll show you tomorrow, I'll make a fantastic tea. Uh, that tea is uh, great for feet and anything. That needs uh, heavy nitrogen, so we'll, we'll start with that. But uh, not only nitrogen, it's, um, they're a fantastic uh, plant for attracting your butterflies. So you'd be amazed at the amount of butterflies that, um, that uh, feed and uh, take shelter on the nettles, you know, they, they love them. So to me it's a no-brainer if, um, if you've got nettles in the garden and the butterflies are going to come down, I'm sure the, um, I'm sure the butterflies would much prefer to, uh, to nestle in the, um, to nestle in amongst the, uh, the nettles and what they would do in the, uh, in your cabbages or your sprouts. So as I say, to me that's a no, that's a no-brainer. You're getting two uses out of a crop that uh, everybody hates. Well, I'd say uh, I don't hate them, I love them. And uh, as I say, I'll, I'll use them as much as I can. But uh, if, you can get the, if you can get the butterflies to come down and just uh, nestle in them, lay the eggs in them, that's great because, as I say, it, uh, it stops you having to protect your, uh, your cabbages. I know you've still got to put nets over your sprouts and your, your cabbage, but uh, at the same time, if, you're, if you're, you're getting the butterflies to rest on there or to, to um, to lay the eggs in there, that's, that's half a bottle, I think, you know, it's, uh, without having to use pest sprays and uh, whatnot. But, uh, no, we love them. I mean, if you've got a place in the garden, you might, you might find a, a, a plot growing up through your fence or in the side of the shed. Just leave them, you know. Don't bother pulling them out. Just leave them, and uh, you'll find that they're amazing uh, how they gather the butterflies and the, all, all the other bugs and... Um, Little beasties that'll feed on them or use them for uh, for cover. So you know, to me they're uh, they're a bit of a bonus. So I'm just going to uh, clip the clip a few of these back just to pay a second as cut the old stems back and uh, rip away a bit of the top stuff so the nettles can start thrown through. Maybe just put a bit of their uh, feed on them a little bit manure and that's it. I'll get three crops off them this year, no problem. Um, cutting down May June. I'll get another crop at the end of July, August, and then I'll get a final crop in the December before the frost cut a load out. So, two to three crops of them, fantastic. Straight up the allotment in the drums, and I'll show you tomorrow when I start feeding the strawberries of, uh, of the benefits of the nettle juice. So, as I say, to me it's a no-brainer. No win, win, win all round. But, uh, yeah, well, for the time being, I'm just uh, I'm going to concentrate on listening to the birds for the, the last half hour before the, before the light takes over. So I'm just going to pop back in the greenhouse, make sure the heating's back on, and then retire for the night. Maybe just have a can for my birthday. So, thanks for all your um, all your best wishes, and uh, I'll see you up the plot tomorrow. Okay, bye for now. And I think you can just see. Roger's feet there. He's uh, busy cleaning up the strawberries. I've got them all hanging up there, the first ones. And they're, uh, they're romping away these ones. Well pleased with them. Not really healthy. But, uh, this morning, as promised yesterday, what I want to do is to uh, get into this tank. Uh, well, I don't know how I'm going to manage this, but I'm going to give it a try. <sighs> Let's see if 
you, if you follow me through the through the sim, we'll put the bags on as soon as you And there we have ours. They're absolutely amazing, nice and fresh. Roger's been right on taking all the weeds out of them. Uh, they've had no water yet. They're still just you can lift the pot out and it's still nice and moist. But uh, that's fine. So what I want to do now is to uh, give them all a good drink. I'll pop that one back. And all I need is a good half a tank of the nettle juice. So I'll set them away fine. Give them a bit of feeling. Full of nitrogen. And hopefully that will do a fantastic crop. So that's the way we like to do them. As I say, there's nothing wasted. Uh, the nettles have been in there since last September. We've got two full tanks here. Um, normally I would just water this down a little bit, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give each pot half a bin load of that. The smell coming out there is absolutely amazing. But uh, yeah, that's for strawberries for this year. We've got the bags in, as I say. Um, reason being, <coughs> we don't like any runoff. You've got the full control of your water out under the cover. There's got no rain, so there's no chance of flooding. And uh, the reason, the reason being to put the bags in, like you say, you've got full control of your water. You just water out of your feet when they need it. And uh, as I say, since these have been hung up at the beginning of the year, they've been absolutely smashing. Um, Roger, as I say, Roger, just been up them right up from top to bottom. Went right to all the baskets, gave them all a good day, uh, good weed note. Now the ones next door in the bigger tunnel are even better. They're in the big buckets, that's the second year ones. Of course, they've been a bigger plant. They're going to grow away a bit quicker. Um, they're a bigger root system because they're, as I say, they're a second year plant. But these are the first year cuttings. We took these cuttings last year and we planted them three up for a basket and they uh, woof that away. Absolutely amazing. The only thing these are going to need now is a bit of spraying, maybe it's, uh, in a week or two time. As I said yesterday, it's spring now, officially spring. It's, it's lovely here this morning, uh, a bit of sunshine, so the, the tunnel and the temperature is absolutely fantastic. It's got to be 60, 65 in here. And just a cold polytunnel, but it's amazing. And of course, it's going to bring these plants on uh, in leaps and bounds. And of course, uh, that's what we want. We want a good crop of strawberries out of the baskets, followed by a second crop in the buckets, followed by a third crop in the big flower pots outside. So it's, we're going to start cropping hopefully at the end of May and right through June into July. And it's, uh, it's a long growing season for the strawberry, but that's where we like to grow us, and uh, we'll get plenty from them. But yeah. I'll have to get out of here because uh, the smell in here is absolutely amazing off these, uh, off these barrels. I'll put the lid back on and uh, hopefully that'll kill the smell a little bit. But um, apart from that, we're well pleased. There's, uh, there's lots of dope here. But uh, at the moment, and my foot uh, and legs we paid, there's not a great deal I can do. I'm okay for planting seeds down home. The uh, brother come pick us up this morning. I brought all the onions up here. So they're in the tunnel next door. What I'm going to hope to do with the is to go up and just sow a couple of packets of seed. Um, starting with the dahlias last week, all the dahlias are in. Um, the marigolds are all in. Quite an easy flower to sow, uh, easy seed to sow, no problems. I've got a half dozen packets I want to sow next week, so I'll, what I will do, I'll start the video off with that next week because there's, uh, there's a lot of people uh, still in our boat sowing. Don't worry about it, it's quite an easy job to do as long as you get your, your compost right, your temperatures right, and your watering right, and you should be no problem. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm just going to work my way through these uh, baskets now and give them all a half a jug of this. God, they, they stink. But uh, it's uh, it's rocket fuel for the strawberries. And uh, as I say, it's a good crop of nettles, so it'll give you a good, a good uh, couple of cupfuls of soup. Then you can start feeding your plants with that. Best of all, it's free, and that's, uh, that's what we like. So, if I'm going to leave for the time being, I want to get stuck in here and get, try and get these strawberries all uh, all fed. This is our first feed, by the way. Um, what I did do, I put a little bit of sulphate of potash around the or Roger did, a little bit of sulphate of potash around the plants a fortnight, three weeks ago. Now, that's well worked its way in, as it's just been weeding around the plants and that. Um, and that's what it build our roots up, and, and your flower once it starts flowering the potash. But I'll like to give it a little bit of nitrogen early on, and that's just going to create a good, nice top growth on the plant. Then you're green. And then once the fruit stems come on, and the fruit stalks will switch over to the polish. Hi, everybody. Well, 
three, four times now I've washed my hands, a bit of bleach, and believe it or not, there's still a smell of, uh, of nettle juice, but there, uh, that's just one of the downsides of the, uh, of the nettle crop, but there, uh, I'm back home now, managed to get back on the greenhouse, had a lovely morning up there, me and Roger, uh, just plodded on, got, um, got the strawberries, give them that first feed in that, as I say, it's a nettle juice, it's, a, it's a, got a good nitrogen feed in it, and uh, it's a good, um, it's a good feed for starting the plants off and getting the, getting the greens and that built up in the, in the leaf and the, as I say, putting a bit of strength into the plant before they start fruiting. Um, that's the whole idea of it. As I say, we'll probably change the, uh, we'll probably change the feed once they, uh, once they start putting a bit of bulk on their, um, on the tops. We'll change it, change it to a potash once they start putting their, um, their fruiting buds not on. But there, uh, that's a few weeks away yet. But uh, the way they look, I'm, I'm well pleased with them. But as I say, I'm back down home now. I'm, uh, I'm going to get a few seeds sown. I've got some uh, money maker tomorrow to put in. Um, I've got, uh, I've got some Miss and Brian at the moment. The Livingston Daisies, love them. But plenty of time for them. As I say, I'm, uh, I'm never know how to start sowing stuff like that. Um, there's some um, Tres Spanish Toms here. That's an odd packet I found the other day. Um, they're not the big giant ones there, they're just an ordinary Spanish one. But they're nice tomorrow. Well, they've been in just over a weekend there, as you can see, there's a, a full pot there. And uh, that's why I like just so small pots like that, you can get a couple of dozen seeds in there quite often, quite easy. You don't have to use massive trays. Um, but uh, there's quite a few uh, comments on the internet about people sowing seed and losing things. If you just, um, if you just go easy, um, so many small trays. And they'll, uh, they'll be fine. You know what I mean. You don't have to sow them too deeply. Get your water in. Get your f get your water in. Get your composts right, and get your heat right, and it should be fine. But uh, for the time being, um, that's about it. As I say, we've been at the plot. We've done a little bit up there. We've fed the strawberries, and now it's time to get a bit potting on done. But I'll I'll make another video through the week when I start sowing these seeds. As I say, I've got the uh, money maker, but I'm going to put some in here. And I'm also going to sow some cold. Um, and I'll probably get started on them um, at the beginning of the week. I've got another load of chrysanthemum cuttings that I, that I took. That was one thing that I, I did do when I, got the, when I went to the garden. I had some stools put outside, so I put them inside now, and that's to throw some shoots off. And I'll hopefully I'll start taking some more cuttings next week. I've got about three trays here. I'll, I'll give them another little spray for the time being. And just keep them nice and moist, and they'll root away perfect. Um, there's my gardener's delight, they're well away. So I've got about four trays of tomatoes already set, so get them get another week, two weeks, and they'll, they'll be fine for, uh, for putting up. But we'll, um, we'll do all that in another video. For the time being, I'm going to stick that top back on them to keep them nice and, keep them nice and moist. As I say, the croissants uh, cuttings, they like a bit moisture. And all I have to do is just go down every day and just give them the, give them the light spray in. As with these down here, just just keep them nice and moist. And that's what it's all about. I've got quite a bit of room down here now, so I can see it by next week I can start putting some of the tomato plants up. Um, and some of the other bits and pieces, some onions. Majority of stuff's up the garden now. I've got the heater on up there, just a, just a slow heat. When I was in the polytunnel this morning, it's got to have been 60, 65 up there. Um, just that little bit of sunshine. So as I say, you, you come to the end of March now, winter and spring, and uh, your temperatures are rising, and now is the perfect time to start sowing your, your seeds. As I've said in the last couple of videos, there's plenty of time. You don't have to. You don't have to hurry. Um, just take your time, and you'll get a, you'll get a good um, a good crop of seed, good crop of plants for planting out in the uh, in the spring and early summer. But uh, for the time being, um, once again, I've, got, I've had a, quite a few of new subscribers come on the last couple of weeks. Um, thanks again. You're welcome. Um, and uh, just keep subscribing, keep sharing, and uh, hope we're helping. As I say, we're on the plot as much as we can. Uh, for you, of you who want a bit more, instead of waiting for videos to come out, you can go on my Facebook page, which is uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot, and uh, send us a request. Get yourself over on the plot, and you can you can share. Um, you can swap pics with her, you can chat with her every night on, on the Facebook channel. Um, but um, that's if you kind of get enough of the videos. So for the time being, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and 
Thanks for sharing, and I'll see you all again soon in the next vid.